Amen. Thank you. Good morning. So glad to see many of you back. <laughs> We've missed you. And to see all everyone here, we, it's good to be together on this third Sunday in Advent, the Sunday of joy. Um, we are thankful for those of you that join us on Facebook Live and Zoom as well. It's a good option if you can't be here in person. God is good. There are some announcements. These cute little things, that they come in your bulletin once a year. It's a joy gift offering on Joy Sunday. So um, there's an envelope. Please give as you feel led. They, this offering helps colleges, young people, as well as the other end of the spectrum, church workers and um, pastors who have lived past what their finances allowed them. And so this, this, this offering steps in to help people at that stage in their life, too. What else? Oh, there's a Christmas party today. Did you know? After worship, everybody's invited. You didn't make anything? That's fine. Come and eat. Some of us made too much. So come and eat and enjoy and have fun. Um, thank you, Marilyn, for being here. Thank you, Rick, for bringing music to us, both of you this morning, uh, making our morning even more joyful. Next week, no Coffee House Church on Saturday night, no Sunday worship on Christmas Eve, but there will be 4 o'clock Christmas Eve service right here on Sunday afternoon. So I hope to see all of you or, or even more people that we don't know here with us. Is there, are there any other announcements that I have forgotten? Yes, Judith. Did you hear Judith? She is thankful for all the things you sent, all the, get, the, the cards, the thoughts, the prayers, all of it. You are welcome. Any other announcements today? Diana. Is there a committee? Are we having a committee meeting now? <laughs> the best session ever. <laughs> and thank you to the congregation for this gift. Um, thank you, all. I hope you all got your teeny tiny third Christmas gift this week. You'll learn more about this when we get to the sermon, because it's your little sermon gift. Any other announcements? I should not stop. There might be others. <laughs> okay. Here, seeing none. Um, let us begin worship with our call to worship. I invite you to stand for the call to worship if you're able. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship, worship the, the Lord, Lord with gladness. gladness. Come, Come before, before him singing with, with joy. joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter, Enter his, his gates, gates with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Go, Go into, into his, his courts with praise. Give, give thanks, thanks to him and praise his name. his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. We light the candle of joy. We just had it on. Yeah. There we go. And we rejoice because we worship the Lord, and the joy of the Lord does not depend on the circumstances, but is found in Jesus, who for the joy of set before him endured the cross. 
Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, we have come to know you, the Word who became flesh and came to live among us. Indeed, we expect to see your glory, for you are full of grace and truth. We wait with joy as your birthday celebration nears, even as we watch for your return. Our hymn of joy this morning is number 134, Joy to the World. may be seated. If you'll join me in our unison prayer of confession. Glorious God, some days we confess, we struggle to rejoice. Sometimes we see the cup half empty. The darkness seems greater than the light. We feel overwhelmed. Amen. In our assurance of pardon, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope and rejoice by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven, so we might joyfully remember we are waiting with hope and peace as we wait for his return. <clears throat> Please be seated. This song comes from a songwriter by the name of David Carter, who died not too long ago. It sort of takes the story and puts it into contemporary terms. Riding hard through the cold, 
Lost on some big city streets with no place left to go. But they're looking for a manger or a sign in the lights. But they're a long way from Bethlehem tonight. But they heard about a savior and a preacher in the park who would hum with the homeless where they shiver in the dark. He'll deliver salvation to the weary and the cold. And he'll bring joy, joy, joy to the wandering soul. Cleaning lady sighs as she closes up the gate. This job don't quite pay the bills and she's always working late. But all in a moment comes a light from above and an angel speaking words of joy and love. <coughs> and he tells her of a savior and a preacher in the park who will camp with the homeless under bridges in the dark. He'll deliver salvation to the weary and the cold. And he'll bring joy, joy, joy to the wandering soul. <clears throat> Four in the morning at the Trade Winds Hotel. The register reads all full up and the clerk thinks just as well. But out in the tool shed by an old Coleman lamp, a little family makes their meager camp And the wise men bring presents And the angels gather round The cleaning lady slips in through the door Without a sound And an old black dog Looks up with the rest As the little babe rests upon his mother's breast and there comes a savior and a preacher in the park who will camp with the homeless under bridges in the dark he delivers salvation to the weary and the cold and he brings joy 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 to the wandering soul and he brings joy 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 to the wandering soul Would the children like to join me up front? Did you all get one of these? So we're going to talk about them. Uh, no, you're right. We should be over here. Good decision. Good decision. Glad you all are thinking this morning. Oh, good. Okay. So what are these? That's what they look like, right? Are they really acorns? Yeah. No, somebody made them look like acorns, but they're not really acorns. Yeah, yeah that one's real? No, it's just like this one. They're different colors, though, sometimes, aren't they? So uh, what do acorns grow into? I mean, are they just there forever and that's it? This is all we have? They grow into a tree. They grow into a tree. Do you know what kind of tree? Ash. Huh? Any tree? Not just any tree. They grow into a particular kind of tree. <laughs> you would make sense. An acorn to come from an acorn tree. I wonder why they didn't call it. Yeah, no, but that's a very good guess. Logical thinking and all. All right, see if anybody in the congregation knows. Are, we, are you ready? Wait, you got an idea? You want to guess? Just any kind of tree that you know. You know any kind of trees? What? <gasps> Yes, an oak tree. Noah, you're a fountain of information. Yeah, these grow into an oak tree. I didn't even have to go to our lifelines out there to find out. So, how, what do oak trees look like? Are they short little shrubs? What are they? White? Do they have oaks on them? Hmm. Oh, not oats, like oatmeal? Oh, no, 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 oak with a K. 
oak trees. Well, I brought you a picture because I thought if I tried to open the door, well, that might just be cold. Really tall trees. Of course, I found this on Google, so I don't know how accurate it is. But there are oak trees around the church. So when you go out today, look for the trees that are out there because there's some oak, big, in the parking lot, there's big oak trees because that's where these come from, right? So we have to, we have to pay attention because, well, I'll tell you in a minute. All right, so if we planted this, if this was a real acorn and we planted it, what would it need? Water, sun, what would we plant it in? Dirt, soil, yes. It needs all those stuff. And, and can we plant it in a tiny little cup and it'll grow forever? What's it need? Ground. ground. Like a lot of ground? Yes. It has to go. What do the roots need to do? Well, the roots go which way? Down. Down. So the three can go up and be nice and tall, right? Okay, that's right. All right, we're on our scripture today. God calls his people oaks of righteousness. <laughs> Why? That's a good question. But the funny part, not the funny part, the kind of strange part was they were not really, they were really sad, and they were really upset, and they were kind of broken people. They'd just come from a really hard place called exile, and they'd come home, and things didn't look so good, and things weren't going so good. Do you think they felt like they were oaks of righteousness? No, they felt like a little broken down, puny little tree of some sort, not oaks of righteousness. So why did God call them and tell them they were oaks of righteousness? Maybe. What do you think? To cheer them up. Yes. Any other suggestions? Feel good, cheer up. <laughs> Bethlehem. <laughs> You're getting there, but not yet, there yet. Because that's who they were. They had just forgotten. They had forgotten that God really had planted them to be oaks of righteousness, not not all sad and upset people, but that was who they really were. They, they were going to be strong and faithful people. Could they do it on their own? No. Could they do it if they were really smart? Yes. Mm, they, that's going to help. Smart helps. And having some I can do it attitude helps. But who did they need help from? Yeah. Jesus, yes, God. They didn't know Jesus' name then, but they knew that they needed because they were trying to do this on their own, but the things just weren't going very well. So, you know what God gave them? God told them he was going to give them joy, and he was going to give them gladness. Hmm. Does that sound like... What does that do for you if someone gives you joy and gives you gladness? What do you think? If you're sad, or you're just feeling like you can't do anything and someone gives you joy and gives you gladness, they make you feel good, don't they? Yeah. It makes you like, wait, what? I'm not all sad anymore? God gave me joy. Because joy isn't something like just like, oh, this is a happy day, I got a present. This is like joy. You know, like it comes from the inside of us. That's hard to explain, which is why you all got acorns instead of a joy gift. Because I couldn't figure out how to put that in a little bag. Well, do you think we need that? Do we need joy? Yes. Yeah. We needed it so bad we had a pink candle to remind us on the Advent wreath today, to remind us of joy. So whether you were an acorn, how do you feel today? Do you feel like an acorn? Or do you feel like a little sapling? Sapling? Acorn? Bigger tree? Older tree? <laughs> ancient oak? How are we doing out there today? Where are you on the range? So we've got acorns to ancient oak, somewhere in between. But we can all be oaks of righteousness, can't we? Yeah? If we depend on who? God, Jesus, and the Spirit. Yeah? All right. I think we better pray about that. Lord God, I thank you for these tiny little ornaments. And I hope and pray, Lord, that every time all the children of God look at that ornament, they remember that they are an oak of righteousness, that they are yours, and that you, Lord, will give each of these young oaks joy so they can grow.
grow into the mighty oaks you have for them to be. We thank you for this children's church time. We thank you for our church time, and we thank you that you are with us. is your teacher today. And we are going to sing, yes we are, People Look East, 105. A prayer of illumination, let us pray. Praise God that the time draws near of Jesus' return. Lord God, as we come to your word this day, we submit ourselves to you, that through your word you would make sound and blameless, ready to receive our King. Amen. The first scripture today comes from Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 to 4 and 8 to 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. 
They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their, their recompense. I will, <clears throat> I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. <clears throat> I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture passage this morning is from Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, to be exact. Chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Amen. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing and the preaching and the living of God's word. Our passage from Isaiah this week is a very familiar one. Hearing it, we may have thought of Jesus in his hometown synagogue when he stood up to read that very passage, saying this prophecy has been fulfilled in your hearing. But long before Jesus came as Messiah, this prophetic word was spoken to others. And I think when I heard this before this passage, before knowing much about Isaiah even, or knowing what it meant, I thought that it was speaking to Israel why they were in captivity, but they, or exile, but they weren't. They, this was spoken to them, they were already back in Israel, slogging away at this work of rebuilding. One commentary writer offers this, their mourning, their grieving, their mourning rises out of the frustration and humiliation over the failure to rebuild the city and the temple to match its former glory, and their failure to reconcile and the economic disparities and the religious and political factions within the city. Kind of sounds like today, doesn't it? The reality of life in Jerusalem was nothing like the expectations for a restored Jerusalem and a righteous community as proclaimed by the prophets and as envisioned by the returnees, end of quote. As I thought about these returned exiles, I wondered uh, what exactly was the problem? Maybe it was that they felt and lived like returned exiles instead of as the people of God. They carried the stigma and the sting of exile back home with them. It's hard to face devastation and destruction and begin rebuilding in your own energy and strength, especially if you carry devastation <laughs> inside yourself amid the destruction around you. God realized what was going on, and God sent the Spirit to work in their midst. A recreation project through an anointed messenger, the servant prophet Isaiah, is sent to proclaim the good news and the year of God's favor to those returning, to those who had returned, and the day of vengeance to their enemies. God wanted to say, look, I'm, I'm, on, I'm with you here, and, and your enemies, I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of them. God, through Isaiah, again offers comfort to those who mourn. But to those who mourn in Zion, God gives these returned exiles a path 
through their mourning into joy and a new identity as God's people. So God gives those that were mourning a garland. You might think of like a, you know, flower, or leaves or something on your head with flowers. You know, we see brides in garlands, don't we? The guys don't wear them so much today. But, you know, garlands were a thing. If you had a track race and you won, they gave you a garland on your head. Okay, it was not a gold prize. So they were give, he, they were they were instead of mourning, they were going to get a garland, instead or a beauty or a turban instead of ashes. When someone was mourning in those days, they didn't put on black; they put on dirt or ashes on their head, which is dark. And they often tore their clothes or put on sackcloth. God says it's time to put the garland on and give up the ashes. Then God gave them the oil of joy or the oil of rejoicing or gladness, depending on your translation, rather than mourning. Oil was regarded as a symbol of honor. Therefore, it was withheld from the body during a time of mourning. You didn't put oil on your head when you were mourning. Remember, you had ashes on your head. Through this oil of gladness, God was restoring their honor. God then gave them the mantle of praise. I think of like a cloak, but I don't know if that's really what it looked like. A mantle of praise. You can imagine in your mind what that looks like. Instead of a faint spirit, or in another translation it read, a spirit of heaviness. I'm reminded of that passage of Zephaniah 3 where God rejoices over his people with songs of gladness. Could this garment of praise be a song that God is singing over his people? Then God tells them who they really are. They are oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. This is interesting because if you look back in Isaiah 1, God said through Isaiah For you shall be like an oak whose leaf withers and like a garden without water. But now, exile is over. God has redeemed his people and their identity. They are no longer the oak whose leaf withers, but the oak of righteousness, a planting of the Lord to display his glory. Can you see the difference between those two oaks? And this was not just a restoration project of the buildings in the temple. God was trying to bring restoration to the people themselves. From where they sat, everything around them, including themselves, was a mess. So God offers to them what God sees. God's restoration of a people of joy and oaks of righteousness. As I said, this is why you got an acorn. I couldn't figure out how to, bu- to bag up joy and give it to you. In verses 8 and 9, God steps up to speak in person and shares God's own values. God loves justice and hates wrongdoing and robbery. That's why God will provide the reward, the work, the recompense that they need. And God restores the everlasting covenant. Because this project of restoration was not going to be over in a moment. It was going to take a few years. They needed to have the long view. They were in this everlasting covenant again, still with God. Then the final verses in that chapter are Isaiah's doxology, if you will, of rejoicing. Isaiah himself speaks up. And he rejoices because God has seen fit to bring restoration to him. And I believe his people. That's why he's joyous. God has clothed me with the garments of salvation and covered me with the robes of righteousness. The servant rejoices in how God has changed his life. And he's restoring the covenant relationship like a marriage. He talks about the joy and the, 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 uh, the, the coverings of a mar- what they wear in a marriage as his remembering what God is doing. And the land itself will become a garden again for all the world to see. Our companion text this morning is 1 Thessalonians, and we hear Paul's imperatives. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all situations, because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. But we need to know why Paul is writing this to the Thessalonians to understand. They were being persecuted, and Paul was worried that their faith would falter. They would give up. 
So he sent Timothy to them to ascertain, how are they doing? What's going on? Paul received word that all was well. And so he sent this letter, 1 Thessalonians, to them to encourage them, even as Timothy's response, report to Paul, encouraged Paul. So Paul reminds them in this letter what they already know. They're, these are the three things they need to have as their way of life. So I would offer you today that when then these are our way of life, when the rejoicing and praying and thanking, even in the midst of difficult times, is our way of life, even in the midst of sickness or grieving or discouragement or failure, that, that we will find our garland, our oil of joy, our mantle of praise. Because as we find in chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians, Paul reminds them and us that we don't grieve like others. We don't mourn like others who have no hope. He doesn't say we don't grieve. That's not what he's saying. He's saying when we grieve, we don't grieve like people who don't have hope. Let's remember that we are not just rejoicing to rejoice. We're not just giving thanks for everything. We're not praying to just anyone. No, Paul knows, and he wants us to remember that when we rejoice, we rejoice in the Lord, like he says in Philippians. And when we pray, with Je we pray we're praying with Jesus, our intercessor, without ceasing. And when we give thanks, we're giving thanks in all situations to God, not for all situations, in the situation. I think sometimes we've gotten that confused. And some people think they have to give thanks to God for everything. No, we give thanks to God in the situation we're in because of who God is. And if we get that right, we might actually see and feel and understand joy. How can we do this? Paul reminds the Thessalonians not to quench or ignore the Holy Spirit. We have been given the Holy Spirit of God. Remember Paul and Silas back in the back of the jail, as Tom reminded us last night at uh, Coffee House Church, after they'd been arrested and beaten and put in stocks, what were they doing? They were singing, weren't they? And praying. I don't know about you, but that would not seem to be my first response necessarily. But they were not thanking God for that situation. They were thanking God in that situation, that the Holy Spirit was with them, that they, they actually were thankful that they could suffer for Jesus. The Holy Spirit is who inspires these prayers, these hymns, and giving thanks even if we are sitting in a prison cell because we believe in Jesus. That's who the Holy Spirit is. Then, Je then Paul reminds them not to believe everything they hear from prophets, but don't disbelieve it either. Test it. Test everything. Check what you hear with Jesus. We have to really start to read this and understand it if we want to do that. And then hold fast to what is good and abstain from evil. That might be hard to do if you're being persecuted. Can you imagine? The temptation would be great to pay back what you have been given. But Paul say, no. No, remember who you are. Remember what is good. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from evil. As I wrote this sermon, I kept coming back, though, to the question of why joy? Why rejoice? Why, is there, why did God give them the oil of joy? Isn't it just a nice extra? Why do we need joy or to rejoice? Yes, to hope. Without hope, we can't keep going. Yes, to peace. Otherwise, we live in chaos and disorder. But joy. Why joy? Why choose joy as one of the four words for Advent? Why name a Presbyterian offering joy gift? I was so curious, so I looked up joy. It was just bothering me. And rejoicing. In Hebrew, I found there were many words. I can't even remember them all. There were many words for joy and rejoicing, shout for joy, gladness. Oh, my gosh. The Hebrew has so many words. It was lovely to know that they had many different ways of saying the same thing. 
They had to keep getting new words for it. And then in the Greek, there were fewer words, which are very interesting. Charis, grace, chairo, to rejoice, and kara, joy or delight. Three words, and as one author put it, joy and rejoicing is the result of the activity of grace in God's people. We can rejoice always, pray without ceasing, ceasing and give thanks in all situations because of the grace of God given to us in Christ Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Joy and rejoicing are a result of grace. For by grace you have been saved, which results in joy and rejoicing. You see, we know or we can know what the exiles returning didn't know. God's grace to us in Jesus is greater than all that we can see or feel. Yes, our lives will at times feel like ashes and mourning. We may have a faint spirit or a heavy spirit. I don't know how your spirit is this morning. We may feel we go through periods of captivity or even deep darkness. But we are never, ever separated. From Jesus. He is Emmanuel. God with you and God with me. Always. That's grace. Beautiful, joyous grace, which leads to joy and rejoicing as we pray and give thanks for what we can't see yet, for what we can't feel yet sometimes but what God has already done for us in Christ Jesus. God gave us Jesus. He's our garland. Put away the ashes. He's our oil of joy. He's our garment of grace. Will we wear it? Let's go to God in prayer. Lord God, sometimes we don't even take the time to check in with our spirits. <laughs> you were reminding me this morning. What is my spirit this morning? Am I carrying around a faint spirit that feels like I can't do anything, or is it a spirit of heaviness? What is it? What is my spirit carrying? I thank you, O oh God, that like those Israelites, you know your people today just as well. You know what their spirits are or aren't this morning better than I do for sure. God, I thank you that you love us. You love us with an everlasting love and joy over us. You're singing that song of praise over us and for us. You were singing it before we even knew the words. You were singing it to us even when we were still saying no, when we were still saying not yet, before we had a place for your joy in us. Thank you, O oh God, for not giving up on us. Thank you for Jesus, our grace and joy, our hope and our peace. Maybe that's why you want us to be in this preparation time, because we need time to prepare for your joy, to make room in our life for a little joy, to take on your garment of praise, to take off the ashes and put on the, the garland that says, I am God's in Christ Jesus this day. Nobody else. That's who I am. 
Oh, Lord, we know that the world outside seeps inside our homes and inside our churches and inside wherever we are, and the world carries a darkness and a, and a heavy spirit. The world carries a conflict and an anger. The world carries a, a bitterness and a revenge that isn't good and isn't very healthy and certainly is not joy. Oh, yeah, there's happiness, yes, Lord, but it isn't like your joy. Oh, God, what the world needs today are oaks of righteousness that are full of joy. Thank you for calling us your oaks of righteousness, too, for giving us those promises in Christ Jesus. Thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us ever. And your grace is how we come to know your joy. So, Lord, this morning we, we do lift up our world. It's where we start because it's where we used to get all of our kudos and get all of our information. But, but we have to remember that we have to check it. You've told us today to check it by you. Lord Jesus, to check it, to see if it's your truth, if it's who you are. Does it hold your righteousness, Lord Jesus? Because there's a lot of truth that doesn't hold kindness and goodness, peace and joy. Thank you for that reminder this morning. And Lord, we lift up those in our congregation and, and people close to this congregation that have come, um, that have been brought to our attention this day in need of prayer. So while we're praying, we will praise the Lord because Dorothy Teeter is home. And we thank the Lord that the, she's feeling better. And she texted me this morning, we're praising you that Bonnie had to leave because she had to go take Mary home from the hospital this morning, Mary Campbell. We praise you, Lord, that, that Mary is better, and we bless you, Lord, for your continued grace and mercy over her as she continues to improve. And Lord, this day we, we lift up Cindy Butts, who's still in the hospital, but she is doing better this week, and we praise you for that. And she may be moving to a nursing home soon. So, oh God, we give you praise and glory for that Cindy's come a long way. And we thank you that, that she is rejoicing in you in the midst of this long struggle to regain her health. We praise you, Lord, that you are with her. She is not alone, not for a minute, in that hospital room. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And this morning we're praying over a prayer shawl that actually is in the hall and one that, that Sandy has. One for John and one for Mary. John's having surgery tomorrow, and Mary is fell and, not, and having a challenge coming back from a fall. So, oh God, we thank you for the warmth of a prayer shawl. We thank you for your love and your grace and your joy that's, that's woven in, and that Sandy will carry those to her neighbors and carry our prayers along with them. For oh God, your grace is greater than the situations those two find themselves in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being with those prayer shawls and with John and Mary. And Lord, there's one more this morning. Janine Campbell found the, 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 the word with a spot on her heart. So Lord, I don't know what that spot is, and neither evidently do the doctors, but you do. So Lord, we just are thankful this day that you are with Janine, and that your grace is tangible with her. And Lord, your grace is greater than that spot. And already at work, Lord Jesus, you are. You're already at work with the grace and joy in that heart of hers for your glory. Lord, we, we lift up Mike and Abby and Liz who who are sick at home, or at least Mike and Abby are. And so, Lord, we lift them today. 
for more of your grace that flows in this place this morning and I know is with them at home. And others this day, Lord, that we think of that are dealing with the flu and the different, the different viruses and things flowing about this community. Lord, we just pray that they would be gone and there would be health and wholeness. We pray that in your name, Jesus. Lord, we pray all these prayers and rejoice in you as we pray together the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy kingdom. Come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's time when we become joyful givers. We have been given with joy, and so we give back with joy today to our Lord. Let's do that now. God, become with joy because you gave us with joy. You give to us joyfully on a moment by moment. So, Lord, we invite you to take these gifts and use them for your glory. Use them for the joy of others that they might know you. Amen. Let us say what we believe by using the Apostles' Creed, uh, our baptismal confession of faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We are now going to sing our hymn of rejoicing. It came upon a midnight clear, one through four, then we'll have a benediction and get ready to go eat, and then we'll do our closing, the fifth verse.
us always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all situations. This is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Rejoice. You have grace. Lots of grace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I'll see you down at the hall. Amen. Amen.